Hello everybody. Welcome to our very first Swift programming language tutorial. This will be part zero of our basics series and will serve as an introduction. We're going to go over a few notes on how to get started and then we're going to type out the traditional hello world. We'll go over just a few more notes and then we will go over what our basics series will cover. So the first thing you want to do if you have not done so already is download Xcode from the Mac App Store. If you're not familiar with where the App Store is, an easy way to find it is go up to your spotlight here and type out App Store and that will take you to the application. Or you can go to your desktop, click on the desktop, and then you'll see Go up here in the main menu bar. Click on Go and then go to your applications and then you'll find the App Store there. I already have the App Store in my dock here, so let's go ahead and open that up. And you can go up to your search here and type in Xcode. Now one thing to note, if you type it in like this, currently you get no results. So you want to make sure that first X is capitalized and then you'll find the Xcode application and then you should just be able to click on the get and download it. Now depending on what kind of computer you have, it may take a little while to fully download. Just give it some time and it will download and then you should be good to go. Okay, so let's go ahead and close this. And once you have Xcode fully downloaded, if you're planning on using it a lot, you might want to go ahead and drag it to your dock. Again, if you're not exactly sure where it is after download, you can always go to your spotlight and type in Xcode, and that should find it and pull it up. Or you can go to your Go and Applications. Or you can always go to your Finder and click on the Applications and find it from there. So in this case, let's just go ahead and go to Go and go to Applications, and it should be down here on the bottom. Let's go ahead and open it up. And the first time you open it up, to just get started with the basics, you have two options. The first option is to get started with a playground. So let's choose that one first. You'll see a window pop up where you can give your playground a name, and then you can choose your platform. You can choose iOS, macOS, or tvOS. Now for learning the basics of Swift, we should be fine to go ahead and just stick with iOS. Let's hit next. It's going to ask you where you want to save it. So if you wanted to save it to your desktop, you could choose that. Or if you wanted to save it to a folder in your documents, you could choose that. I have this set up to save in an Xcode folder in my documents. So let's go ahead and hit create. And your playground will be created. Now you can see up here in the menu bar this little spinning wheel and this might take just a little bit of time to load and launch. And once this is fully loaded and launched, you should be ready to go to start typing out code. Now just a little note, it may take a little while for it to fully load and launch, but then once it's ready, in the default setting you'll see your outputs over here in the sidebar on the right. Okay. Now, for the most part, we probably will not be using playgrounds for our basics series. However, if you like these playgrounds, the code that we will go over, you should be able to type it in a playground and it should be fine. Okay, so let's go ahead and close this. And let's open up Xcode again. Now, another way that you can get started with learning the basics of Swift is to go here and to create a new Xcode project. So let's go ahead and click on that. And we're going to go up here. If you're not already on Mac OS, click on Mac OS and then click on Command Line Tool. Let's click Next. Go ahead and give your project a name. Let's just call this Swift Practice. And you don't have to worry too much about the rest of this. However, make sure that the language is set to Swift. We'll go over more about the details of the team, the organization name, the identifier, and the bundle when we get into creating applications. Go ahead and hit Next. Again, save it wherever you want to save it. Hit Create. And as your project opens, it will default to this screen. Now, to get to the file where you can start typing in code, 
Just go over here to the left sidebar and click on the main.swift file. Okay? So now you have your file. Now notice that this default imports the foundation framework. And if you'd like to find out more about that, what you can do is hover your cursor over the foundation, click on the option key until you see the question mark, and then click it. Okay? And the foundation framework gives you access to essential classes that define basic object behavior, data types, collections, and OS services. And we'll talk more about frameworks and libraries and classes in future tutorials. Okay. Now it's tradition for one of your first programs to go ahead and type out print hello world. When we open this up, it went ahead and did that for us here. Now to run this, you want to go up to your top bar here and you'll see the universal symbol for the play button. This will go ahead and build and run your current code. So let's click on that. Give it just a second to load. And you'll see down here in the output box, we get our hello world. Okay. Now this print hello world is just a simple way to display something or to print something to the screen. Okay. So let's go ahead and close this. And let's open up a file that I created earlier. Okay, so we've gone over the basics of how to get Xcode, how to create a playground, and how to create a simple project. And that's where we went to the Mac OS tab, and then we click the command line tool. Now another easy way to get started with learning Swift is if you have an iPad, there's an application called Playgrounds. Okay, and to get that, just go to your iOS app store on your iPad and search for Playgrounds and download that. And we'll probably do some tutorials on how to use Playgrounds on your iPad at some point in the future. However, if you'd like to get started with that right away, I do believe there are some tutorials in iTunes University. If you go to your iTunes application and then go to the iTunes U and search for Playgrounds tutorials, you should be able to find some resources there. Now, another note, if you want to start creating apps for the App Store immediately, you will have to sign up to be a developer. However, to get started learning Swift, as it stands, you do not need to sign up to be a developer. Okay, but let's go ahead and show you how to sign up for the developer program. So the first thing you want to do is just go ahead and open up a browser. So let's go to Safari and let's just type in our little Google search box here, Apple Developer Program. Okay, let's click on the top result here. And then you're taken to a Apple Developer Program information page. And to get started, you should be able to click on Enroll here and follow all the steps and sign up. Okay? Okay, so moving on, we already went over our traditional Hello World program. Another good thing to know when you're first getting started is how to make comments in your code. And to make a short comment, you just use two forward slashes like this. And anything you put in comments will not be recognized when you run your code. Okay, so you won't see error messages. And it's good to get into a habit of creating comments so that when you look at your code, so for example, that's six months old, you'll know exactly what you were trying to do. Okay, so that's how you make a short comment. And to make a long comment, you just put a forward slash two stars and another forward slash and then anything you put inside here will become part of that long comment okay now another thing that we already touched on briefly is if you want to find out more about a framework or a library or a function or something like that you should be able to hover over it and click the option key until you see the question mark and then click it and you'll get information about that item that you clicked. So let's show you another example. If we use a print, if we want to find out more about this print, we can hover our cursor over it, click Option, we see the question mark, click it, and then you get all kinds of information about the print function. Okay, so next up, what will we be covering in this basics series? Here we have a layout for the next 15 tutorials or so. So for our first tutorial, we're gonna go over variables and data types. Then we're gonna go over characters and strings, numbers and operators. Then we'll go over ranges, if statements, switch statements, functions, arrays, dictionaries, sets, tuples, 
loops, classes, structs, and enums. Okay, so that's it for this part zero or introduction to our Swift Programming Basics series. Let's just do a quick recap. First things first, you want to make sure that you go ahead and download Xcode from the Mac App Store. Once you have that downloaded, to get started in learning Swift, you can use a playground or you can create a project. To create a simple project, you can click on the Mac OS tab and then choose Command Line Tool. If you'd like to get started on an iPad, you can download the Playgrounds application from the iOS App Store. If you'd like to sign up to be a developer, just open up a web browser, type in Apple Developer Program, and from the Apple Developer Program main page, click on Enroll and follow the instructions. Okay, we did our traditional Hello World for our first program. We went over how to create short comments and long comments, and we went over how to find out more information about certain parts of your program, such as frameworks, libraries, functions, and all that good stuff by hovering over that text, clicking the option key, and then when you see the question mark, you click it. And finally, we went over what we will be covering in this basics series here. That's all we have for this tutorial. We'll be doing many more Swift tutorials in the near future. Join us for those, and we'll see you next time.